Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be geographically located on the globe. I'm Tina Letitia Hill, founder and ministry leader of Bridging the Gap Among Nations International Ministries Incorporated. Today is Tuesday, March 11, 2021, and we are super excited here at Bridging the Gap um, because this month, since 1949 has been designated as National Mental Health Awareness Month. And typically we hold uh, teleconferences monthly and um, we provide um, discussions and presentations um, on a variety of mental health and wellness related topics. Um, but in the month of May, since it is National Mental Health Awareness Month, we hold weekly convenings. And so we are just super excited. Um, we jump started uh, last week and had an awesome discussion that was focused around post-traumatic stress disorder. This week, um, I have the distinct pleasure of having our uh, ministry team members, partners and supporters uh, with us live. And tonight we're going to be talking about stress and its deadly holistic uh, impact. Stress management, a variety of of things related to stress. So I think you will probably be pleasantly uh, surprised at some of the things that is going to come out of uh, tonight's conversation. So we have uh, Miss Haiti Fuentes and um, Michael Gonzalez um, with us tonight. They are both uh, um, licensed, um, licensed professional counselors um, as well as active in ministry. So um, without further delay, I'm going to bring them on the screen and um, allow them to give us some opening comments. And then um, I will uh, have uh, Dr. Ward, um, one of our other ministry uh, partners and supporter, who is pastor um, um, in in Maryland at Greater, um, at Greater Spiritual uh, Fellowship. She's going to come on board, also a mental health counselor as well. She's going to come on board and provide us with an opening prayer. So for now, I'm going to bring uh, Mike and Haiti on screen. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm honored and I'm blessed and I'm just so excited as usual to be a part of bridging the gap among nations ministry, um, being able to participate in these such important topics, uh, topics that are being discussed specifically in Mental Health Awareness Month. Correct. And I'm humbled actually to be online here with you guys and to be part of Leticia's um, session here. And we just wanted to say that this is something that's very dear and near to me. Later, you'll hear a testimony regarding what stress did in my life. And so I make it a point now to really discuss this with people. You know, what can you do if you have stress? What does the Lord say in his word about stress? And how seriously really we have to take it. I did want to give a medical disclaimer that Michael and I, like she said, are professional counselors. We are not MDs. So at the end, when we give you some recommendations on some things that you can do, if those things entail things like exercise, then please make sure that you discuss this with your own personal physician to make sure that this is plausible for you. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make sure that we are providing and edifying the body of Christ and we are able to present this information um, uh for informational purposes, for psychoeducation, for awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as you find this information and as you're able to engage with uh, some of the information we're able to bring, uh, we hope that that will encourage you to have those necessary conversations with, with your physicians, with counselors, with your pastors, with whomever it is uh, that you feel that is necessary and will be able to bless and help your life. And I always tell people, you might be on here saying, well, I don't really have a stressful life, but it's probably going to happen that you might meet someone that's having going through some stressful events. And after this session, I guarantee that you will be able to be a blessing to them and award them information. We're going to cover some things that are trivial. We're going to talk to you about the history of stress, and then we're going to get a little more deeper into the subject. I know that... Um, Sister Leticia will be stopping us every now and then to see if you guys have any questions that we might be able to respond. And so we want to make it as interactive as we can with our audience. And so we hope you're ready and we hope uh, that you will be blessed um, with this presentation. Amen. We're excited to be able to. I'm blessed. Am I blessed? You're I am blessed. blessed. Are you blessed, Leticia? <laughs> absolutely, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> and so we're excited and um, we hope that as Dr. Ward opens with a word of prayer, um, that you will be ready to stay tuned. Yes. 
Amen. And so, um, okay, so I, I will uh, give you guys a pause so you can get your slides set up and, um, and we will take it from there. Um, and thank you so much, um, Sister Haiti, for making mention about the disclaimer. Um, with all of our, our convenings, I always put a disclaimer out there that nothing that you hear um, in any of our convenings is designed to take the place of a medical visit or to take the place of a professional mental health and wellness um, visit. Although we do have licensed professionals on board, please ensure that you adhere to any guidance that's given to you uh, by, by your uh, respective counselor or medical provider. Uh, so uh, without further delay, I'm going to bring on um, Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Joanne Ward to open us up in a word of prayer. Welcome, Dr. Ward. Well, good evening, everyone. Let us go to the throne room for prayer. Heavenly Father, we just truly adore you. We bless your holy name, Lord God. And Lord God, we are just so excited, Lord God, Lord God, to hear this teaching, Lord God, on stress, Lord God, the holistic impact, Lord God. Lord God, is just probably not a one of us, Lord God, who has not experienced some form of stress in our lifetime, Lord God. And even though it might be temporary, Lord God, and sometimes it's long term, Lord God, but we thank you, Lord God, that we'll be educated, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the presenter tonight, Lord God. We pray a blessing upon them as you use them to your glory, your honor, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for this forum, Lord God, Lord God, doing this mental health month, Lord God. And we are praying, Lord God, as people tune in, Lord God, Lord God, they'll be more open, more receptive, Lord God, to their body, Lord God, and the emotions they're experiencing, Lord God. And they will be able to seek professional care, Lord God. Lord God, we actually remove the stigma, Lord God, uh, Lord God, to hide and how, how they feel, Lord God. But Lord God, let them open up, Lord God, because we know we cannot hear of what we can't reveal, Lord God. Again, we just thank you, Lord God, for this forum, Lord God, this opportunity, Lord God, during this mental health month, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to be strong, Lord God, in our faith, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to continue to walk, Lord God, in our purpose and our calling, Lord God. And we avail ourselves unto you, Lord God, to be used of you, Lord God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Ward. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. God bless you. Um, Evangelist Toby, I see you um, on audio there. Thank God for you tonight. Looking forward to uh, your contributions to the discussion as well tonight. Amen. So once again, we are super excited. This is Bridging the Gap Among Nations International uh, Ministries Incorporated. And we're here tonight uh, to uh, hear um, some awesome information on uh, stress and its deadly impact. Amen. So we're just super excited once again. So I am not going to delay the time, but before I pass it over uh, to Mike and Haiti, I mean, I want to invite you back on next Tuesday night, same time, same place, same platform, where we will be joining forces with our uh, Hispanic ministry partners and supporters who are also very passionate about mental health and wellness, amen, and who also bring a wealth of information uh, to inform, empower, and educate us as it relates to mental health and wellness as well. So that um, convening will be bilingual, amen. So if you speak English, you speak Spanish, come one, amen. We're going to have an awesome time. So that'll be next Wednesday night. I'm sorry, um, next Monday night, sorry, Monday night, May 17th, uh, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please stay tuned to our Facebook page, amen, for additional details. So without further delay, I will um, I will go ahead and bring up the slides and pass it over to Mike and Haiti. So we wish that it would be this simple. Uh, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of this, but, but we just want you to know that it's doable and that things will and can get better. And for all intents and purposes, um, we played around with different titles of this. And we what well, we found the most appropriate title was the holistic effects about stress, because even though we are focusing a lot on mental health, we understand that stress in and of itself affects all different areas of our of our being, body, soul, spirit, and mind. And so we hope uh, that in this presentation, we'll be able to uh, uh, expand on that. 
So if you look at our slide, we chose to use water do droplets um, in our background. And it was interesting, some, some facts that we found about water. And so we want to just kind of share that with you because it's a different way to start something on stress, but we want you to kind of get the, the meaning of this. So water can make its way around anything. So think about the fact that if you're out in a pond or a lake, you're gonna see that you're gonna have rocks and bricks and all that, and the water is still gonna bypass all of those things. Another thing is that water in, in and of itself is also flexible. It can stand high temperatures, uh, you can boil it, um, it can accept it's extreme low temperatures and it can even freeze. And so it accommodates to the different needs according to the environment. Correct. So items, um, another thing that water can do within its flexibility is that it can be diluted, um, items can be diluted into it, but water itself cannot be diluted. Okay, 70% of our brain um, is made out of water. So we could actually learn from water strength and the fact that it's such a big portion of who we are. Now, later on, we're going to give you some equivalent um, scriptures regarding this, but we wanted to talk to you about a psychologist, us being psychotherapists, William James, who says this, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. And later on, we'll share something that I found today from a website, it's, uh, it's Losing Weight with the Lord. It's a Christian website for weight loss. And it was very interesting. The person said, let me prove this to you. If you have a bad thought, start counting. So you start counting one, two, three, and then all of a sudden start saying the Lord, start saying Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What happened to the numbering? Automatically you forgot what number you were on because our brain can only think of one thing at a time. So it's very important that we make sure that we understand that concept. And so we're talking about water and we're using this water analogy, right? And a lot of times when we discuss water, um, we've kind of asked ourselves, is the glass half full or is it half empty? Or is it something else that matters? It's more about how we hold on to that water bottle than how we view it. Correct. So let's say that you take a water bottle, a 20 ounce bo bottled water, and you attempt to hold it for a few minutes, your arm probably is not going to hurt. But let's say that I tell you, well, now you have to hold that same 20 ounces of water for an hour. I'm going to guarantee you that unless you're a real sports buff and you, you do a lot of heavy lifting, you're probably going to have a very bad ache in your arm. But if I tell you, hold on to this 20 ounces of water for a day, just like sometimes people hold on to their stress, then your arm will become numb and feel paralyzed. And so when we're looking, we're talking about stress. And so life stressors and burdens, they're exactly the same way. The longer that we hold on to them, the worse they become and the more detrimental. So we want you to keep this in mind that as we're dealing with stress in our life, uh, one of the things that come to mind is the necessity of uh, what the Lord comes and says, come all ye who are heavy burden, and in me you will find rest. So as we're talking about stress and we're talking about the detriments of stress, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, but in this we understand that the longer that we hold on to this, it's going to affect us in a more negative fashion. Okay. So now this is just a little part of history. And it's interesting that these words that we're going to cover here had nothing to do with human beings in the past. So initially the term stress was strictly used in engineering. So things like stress, strain, resilience, pressure, and elasticity were only used to describe the effects of the materials that were used on bridges to make sure that the, br the bridges were good and that they were not going to crack under pressure. And so now when we're looking and we're, we're able to, to, to see that, wow, they were able to actually take this term that was initially used in construction, that was initially used um, to um, explain the a certain amount of weight and the amount of burden that a, that a specific structure can hold. Now we're able to see that as time passed, they were, they were effects or it can be translated 
into human stress. And so when we go into um, Hiles Hans saying, he used the first definition for psychological stress, which was in 1936. And he stated that stress is the non-specific response of the body to any demand for change. And now this was so unknown and so not typical that actually Hans thought about it and it took him 10 years before he actually started using the term in 1946. So in 1956, that's when he coined the term known as general adaptation syndrome. They use the acronym GAS, right? And that's to describe the psychological response to a stressor that occurs in a specific sequence. And there's specific stages um, that we're going to go into that basically explain uh, what stress is. Right. So alarm. I know that you guys have heard about the flight, fight or flight response, but the alarm refers to that in initial symptom that your body experiences when under stress. And some people will stay and fight and some people will flee or flight. Correct. The resistance is after that initial shock of the stressful event happens then the body begins to fight to repair itself by resisting or adapting to the stressor. And then the third, the third stage is called exhaustion. And it's referred to the individual is repeatedly exposed to the stressor and is unable to escape. Right. And this sometimes takes more effect when a person has chronic stress, which we're going to discuss, or when a person has routine stress that they don't even realize they have and so the exhaustion phase then becomes worse. And so as we were talking about this and Haiti and I, we were kind of uh, dialoguing on just stress in general. It took us to scripture. And if we look in the book of Matthew, chapter six, verse 27, there's a question that was asked by Jesus, which basically said, and who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? I found that so sobering. Because as simple as that statement it is, it is extremely profound in understanding that a lot of times um, stress is initiated by the worry Correct. that we have in our lives. And even Jesus himself is asking, well, who by being worried is going to add a single hour to your life? Correct. And we know, Michael, too, that the enemy attacks our mind, right? So, you know, when a person starts, let's say, to feel ill, the first thing that the person says is, I'm going to die from this disease or I'm not going to be able to get over it because that's what the enemy does. He comes and he, he haunts your mind. And so if we were going to more layman terms, right, what is stress? Right. So researchers, according to the slide, we can define stress as a physical, mental or emotional response to events that causes bodily or mental tension. So simply put, if you look at the graph here, stress is any outside source or event that has an effect on your body, mind, emotion, and our behavior. So let's look at the graph for a second. And so um, for instance, with my situation, I will tell you as we're gonna get to that slide later that prior to me having my heart attack, I was given signs. I was given signs Two weeks prior, I was having a lot of pain around my shoulder blade and around my neck. Um, I was having dizzy spells. I remember getting up one day in the morning at around to go to work at seven o'clock in the morning. And when I went to get in my car, this dizzy spell just came on. And, you know, being the person that I am and always trying to move forward, I said, wow, I must have just had a bad, you know, bad night and I didn't sleep well. And I dismissed it. And my body was actually telling me something is coming and you're not listening to your body. So your body, when it's stressful, can show you all kinds of these things. You can have muscular twitches, um, you can experience fatigue. There are people that actually get boils on their skin, they have skin irritations. You can have headaches for emotions. When you look at emotions, you're looking at the loss of confidence. Uh, sometimes you're more fussy, irritability, depression, apathy, alienation, apprehension. And when we look at that and we think alienation, I think that sometimes the enemy does that also. So when we are very stressed out or we have a lot of depression, what does the person normally want to do? They want to be away from their support system. They want to be in bed, right, under the covers. And so that alienates the person and it only makes them 
worse because then those emotions start affecting the mind. You start to worry. Um, you start to have nightmares and impaired judgment. Uh, you're indecisive and the things that have to get done. And you have a lot of negativity and bad self-talk, which we're going to talk about in a second. And, and it's interesting, uh, Haiti, that you brought up the word alienation, right? Because one of the things that we're also um, noticing, just living in this COVID environment mm -hmm. and, and, and just being real with the pandemic, mm -hmm. how many people's level of stress has gone up Correct. because they're in isolation, Yes. Because they're alienated from their families, they're alienated from their jobs, they're alienated from all of these different circumstances. And we're seeing that um, where sometimes people would have thought, oh, me staying home? Oh, that's going to be the most relaxing thing ever. Correct. And we're finding a society that now more than ever is stressed out. Yeah, I I'm going to venture to say that probably in four years, when we have more statistics of the mental health that has been created with this pandemic, which almost seems like an endemic now, we're going to see a much higher statistics than what we are even going to share with you today. And so um, also talking about what are some of the stress signs in behavior? Those, those behaviors are those outward expressions, those things that we can see, right? So sometimes in our behaviors, we tend to be more accident prone. We lose appetite. There's loss of sex drive. Uh, some people drink more. There's insomnia, restlessness, and uh, smoking or picking up other bad habits. Correct. So people will pick up additional addictions when they're highly stressed that just they think is going to be helpful because it might help them as a coping mechanism for that moment, but then it actually becomes a deterrent for their healing. And so uh, as kind of referring back to the title, right, we were talking mm -hmm. about the holistic effects about stress, mm -hmm. right? So yes, we're talking about mental health, Correct. but at the same fashion, we can find that stress in it of itself can affect all different areas of our life. It mm -hmm. affects our body, it affects our mind, it affects mm -hmm. our behaviors, it can affect our emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's not shown in this specific slide, but we understand as believers Correct. that it affects our Your spiritual spirit. life. Absolutely. Right? And so when we're talking about holistic, the holistic effects about stress, how many people sometimes in the church or in ministry or in servanthood in doing things for the Lord, many times are affected in their spiritual walk with Christ because of the stressors that surround it. Correct. And I, and I'd like to say this at this moment that in, you know, in what we do, we are, we call ourselves Christian counselors. We often see the body of Christ and they come to us and there is a certain stigma, right? There's a certain taboo where they almost feel ashamed to come because they feel that if their pastor would know that they're there, Uh, some pastors might be judgmental and say, well, you haven't prayed, you haven't fasted. Um, you know, when I was going through my divorce from a very, very, and, and Michael knows my story, but from a very abusive person, you know, that's one of the things that I would continuously hear is have you fasted? Have you prayed? Um, and my life was in danger and I was still hearing this. So I want whoever is out there to know that it is no sin. If you realize that there's something that you need help with for you to seek that kind of professional help not to minimize going to your pastor and not to minimize what the Lord says, but sometimes no different than if a person has diabetes, sometimes, you know, pills don't work for them and they have to go on insulin. It's what the body needs. Yes. And um, uh, the scripture that actually uh, came to mind as we were talking about this is um, uh, 2 Thessalonians 5.23, where it says, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. That shows us, Haiti, that God is not only interested in our soul, Correct. that God is interested in our spirit man, he's interested in our yeah. soul man, and he's interested in our physical man, because it's telling us that it may be preserved blameless to the at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which I think we have to do the due diligence and responsibility to be able to nurture and practice um, good practices so that it can affect all the different areas of our life. Absolutely. Now, I'm not sure, Sister Leticia, uh, she had asked us within every few slides if we could stop and maybe perhaps answer any questions before we start going into the area of statistics. So do we have any questions that need to be answered at this point?
Give me those things. Sister Letitia, are you there? I am here. Uh, is there anyone? Pastor Nico? Okay, all right. So I'm going to bring Pastor Nico from Coppers Cove, Texas, uh, to give us a comment here. Thank you. One moment. Welcome, 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 Pastor Nico. God bless you. So good to see you again. How you doing? All right, doing great, doing great. Yeah, um, my, my, this, um as Christian leaders being mental counselors, I guess we'd say, what is the church making so hard? parishioners, the sheets and so forth, that want to go outside to seek the professional help you guys offer. Especially you being leaders and leaders of the church, how did, I guess, it, where's the way, where's the disconnect? Pastor, it's interesting that you bring this up and it's, it's uh, you know, a few years ago, I, I worked at a, as a clinical director at a school and it was a Christian school. And I was um, actually trying to explain to the pastors, we had about 12 pastors on board. Um, they were very reluctant um, to, to ever, you know, refer someone for professional counseling. And just around that time, and I, I, I it wasn't part of this, so I, I don't have the the links, but I can certainly get it for you. There was a Baptist church that had just been asked to shut down. And it was very, it was a very kind of like in your face things to share with the pastors because it was a good church. It was, you know, they, they were biblically sound. And what ended up happening is that they had a parishioner that had gone to see the pastor on several occasions to say how they were feeling. And Michael and I, you know, discussed this case way back then you know, if as professional counselors, if we had heard what the person was saying, we would have known right away that the person was bipolar. So the person was saying things like, well, you know, I have moments where I'm really happy. Um, and then two or three days later, I'm super depressed and I don't want to eat, et cetera. Well, what the pastor kept saying was the same kind of things that I was hearing. So the pastor was saying, well, you probably, you know, are sinning. You probably are not fasting. You're not kneeling before the Lord. And what ended up happening, what ended up closing that church was that the person committed suicide and the person left the letter. Whoa. And the person said, this is what I've been telling my pastor. I think they hung themselves if I remember correctly. This is what I've been telling my pastor now for six or seven months. And I've done everything he said. I have prayed, I have fasted, I have no before the Lord. I'm praying, pay my tithes and I don't get better, right? So if you ask Michael and I, what is the most treatable disorder on the DSM? We would tell you, right? Like bipolar disorder is very treatable, but people need, if they have an imbalance of serotonin levels, they need the SSRIs. They need that medication. A pastor probably wouldn't know that. So I don't know that it's an easy answer. I think that programs like this that are bringing information out into the forefront is a start. And I think that it's pastors like you that should get the word out because this is not a competition. We're, we're not, as professional Christian counselors, we're not competing with clergy. We're not competing with pastors. This is, this, is in, this is to help you guys. This is in conjunction. This is not in lieu of. This is in conjunction to everything that the church can offer a person. Yeah, and, and kind of sounding off on what Haiti's talking about, I, I can also say that, and I believe I shared this in another presentation or in a previous presentation at some point, um, scripture tells us that the body of Christ or that the church in and of itself is, is compared to the body. Yeah. And we understand that the body has its different functions. The eyes cannot do the function of the mouth and the mouth cannot do the function of the ear and the ear cannot do the function of the nose. And we understand through scripture that there's different giftings and talents and there's different callings within the body of Christ all for the edification of the kingdom of Christ. Yeah. And so when we understand that if God has given some gift of teaching and has given others the gift of praise and worship and has given others the gift of counseling and the others um, the gift of service, 
then we should understand that as believers, we can utilize these for the edification of the body of Christ. As Haiti said, it's not a competition, but we're all striving for the betterment and for the health to be able to establish a healthy kingdom. As we were stating in the slide before, right, we're talking about the holistic effects of stress, right? So we know that stress can affect not only the body, it yeah. can affect the mind. Yes. It can affect the spiritual being. It can affect our behaviors. Yeah. It can affect our, 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 our spirit man. And so this is why it's important. And, and, and I enjoy platforms like this because mm -hmm. I think it invites that dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Such as, such as what you're presenting and, today. And, and thank you, Pastor, for even, you know, for being bold enough to even ask that question. I might take my hat off to you. Uh, uh, thank you, because um, I am, and I have opened, I said it last week, I seek, I have a behavioral, <laughs> a, a mental health counselor and everything. And Michael, what you just, the gifts in the house. Mm -hmm. and that's what I guess was deriving from the, but now you both have standing. If we suppose if the Bible says we're supposed to call the gifts in the house, and actually pastor, pastors, we're supposed to use every aspect of the house. We shouldn't just use the accountant, we use the painter or the carpenter. So Correct. uh we use the nurse for the people that pass out. So all gifts supposed to be plausible like the mouth can't help the eyes can't help so i appreciate you uh, answering my question because I, I i do try to diligence to stay in my lane. um Thank you. not my lane um i will Thank you. i am an advocate first want to tell somebody i will pray with you. i will i will advise you body and if i if i need to go to that appointment do that, but I can't count in mental capacity because I, I I just can't get birth because especially now coming out his late whoever that person left a suicide no I mean that's that that's that's something that's out of your lane yeah and you just motivated me pastor because I've been wanting to write a book and actually uh, Michael and I both went to a Christian university to get our graduate degrees and I yeah. I wrote on the integration of theology and, and psychology and there's so much out there when you compare what Christ said to some of the things that we see in our psychological training you know they're meant to be you know and so uh, thank you for that uh, thank you both for uh, standing up uh, of course pastor for allow me to make my comment um I I I get careful because I'm a strong advocate for because I know what it does for me. That's all I can. Say. Thank you. Thank you. That's a powerful. That's yeah. a powerful voice. Yeah. Um. Not only as an individual and not only as a man, but it's also a powerful voice as clergy. Mm -hmm. I think that parishioners, um, congregants need to be able to hear from pastors mm -hmm. that say, you know what. You have these giftings within the body of Christ. And I understand, you know, and, and I, I have to be honest and transparent. Not all counselors are good. Correct. The right. same way not all doctors are good. And the right. same way not all teachers are good, right? Um, but we do know that we have good and we have good teachers. And we also have good counselors mm -hmm. within the body of Christ that is for the edification of the body of Christ. And so thank you for being that voice and that advocate. Mm, thank you. Amen. You're welcome. Pastor uh, Nico, I was just sharing uh, with someone just a while back that um, you are a reflection of part of the vision um, that um, I have, you know, for uh, this particular platform. The pastors and the ministry leaders are the target audience because, you know, as I um, often share, and me and Mike just talk about this statistic as well, you know, studies show that parishioners. Um, it says that like 40% of parishioners are more likely to go to their pastor, their faith leader, or their ministry leaders um, when they're in crisis before they would even think about going to a mental health counselor, a psychiatrist, or a psychologist. And so those pastors are in a position of trust. They're in a position of influence. So if those pastors are saying, you know, if they're being transparent and just saying, hey, you know what? I don't have it all together, you know? Hey, I, I, 
you know, I have an issue and this is beyond me and I need to seek professional help. It does not yes. diminish God, it does not diminish the power of God, but just like just like uh Minister Michael was just explaining and you were explaining it and uh, actually in, in, in the local church that I took a remnant, um uh, the pastor there, Pastor Glasby, just did a, a presentation. I guess I shouldn't say presentation, but um, a series basically focused on oneness in the body. So counselors are, they are a part of that. So um, thank you Correct. so much for, uh, for your transparency. So um, yeah. grateful just to have you. Yes, and I, I want to just piggy, piggyback on that and say, you know, it starts in the pulpit. If we would hear more pastors like you getting up and saying, you know, this is what I believe in and I have a counselor on my staff and, and this is why I feel that this is important. If it started in the pulpit, I think that we would see a turnaround. And Amen. thanks. Amen. I agree. Mm -hmm. Amen. So any other questions, uh, Sister Leticia, or would you like us to move forward? Uh, we can. Uh, well, we have, we have a comment here. Thank you so much, Pastor Nico. We have a comment here. Let me just read here. So it says, uh, some pastors focus only on the spirit man and do not minister or understand the other parts of man that are sick. Holistic health is important. Can you read it? Because I um, the voice is cracking, so I couldn't. It's not showing. I'm sorry. Can you repeat it? The voice cracks a little, so it's hard for us to hear. The, the questions and the comments. Okay, so it was a, a comment. This is coming from Dr. Ward. Dr. Ward, do you um, bring you on? Okay, let me just bring her on. All right. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Ward. What I was saying uh, when uh, Pastor Nico was talking, and one of the things that I understand is that some pastors, all they know is the spiritual man, and that's all they focus on. They don't recognize that the mind and the body and other parts could be sick. So, you know, mm -hmm. so they only, if, if the spiritual man might be healthy, they think the whole body is healthy. So they don't have to understand that man is more than his spirit and everything. So that's why I like to, you know, minister to the holistic person, make sure yes. they're, they're well in all areas of their lives. Yes. And that's an excellent point, Dr. Ward, because when we even think about it, what better counselor? We've always said that our greatest teacher, our greatest counselor, his yes. name yes. is the counselor, right? right? right. Is Jesus, right? Correct. And when we see that Jesus was approaching the masses and he knew that he was here to conquer a spiritual kingdom, but he had to take time for the fishes and the loaves because he knew there were times where he had to tell his disciples, no, now you go and you feed them mm -hmm. because he understood that, yes, I was there to feed and to make these men and women free from the bondage of right. sin. But they had not a physical need as well. They had to eat their fishes of and loaves as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a perfect example, just as what you said, Dr. Ward, that us as believers, when we are talking about this and when we talk about the effects that sin in it of itself has on man, it's holistic. Mm -hmm. You know, it will affect our body. It will affect our mind. It will affect our spirit and it affects our behaviors in every, every different area. So thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Ward. Um, could I be so gracious um, to ask, we were getting a little bit of, a little bit of feedback um, earlier. Um, Pastor Nico, can I can I bring you back again? Um, someone just sent me a message, and I think what you said was very very critical. Can I bring you back just for a brief synopsis of what you what, what you were sharing? Okay. All right. So you asked? Oh, you mean from last week? Yeah, no. Well, if you want to do that, you can. But when you were talking, there was, a, um, there was a, a, some feedback. So I think some of what you were saying got missed. Oh, from the, you mean when from I just, that comment? Just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. When I was saying that from when, uh, about the about all the gifts, when the church, when the Bible talks about the gifts in the house. Yes. And I noticed that pastors do not look at all the gifts in entirety. 
Absolutely. They'll look for the accountant, the one that can help with finances. They'll look at the person who can help paint or do renovations for the church. But when we're talking about all gifts, since I look at you know doctors, everything, that's a gift. So if the whole kingdom is supposed to be fully equipped, then gift from the mental counsel, uh, mental health counselor to uh, I don't know, for policemen, the firemen, you know, all those things. And the body is lacking because pastors refuse to use certain gifts, especially when it comes to the mental capacity. Because like I I even mentioned like last week, remember I told you uh, when I went to a pastor at first when I had mental issues and he told me to pray and to fast, pretty much like this young lady was told. The only difference between it, I didn't take my life. Uh <laughs> So, it, so of course, I don't deal with that person. When I especially told that person, I deal with a mental health counselor, and that person caused me to set back and not go. And if you remember, I actually two weeks went by, and my mental health counselor reached out to me, begged me to meet him. I finally broke down, went to meet him after we talked and all this stuff. And I told him everything that this pastor said. At the end of the conversation, he pulled out his credentials to show me that he was a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so that alone lets me know here's a pastor who is a mental counselor, but yet his gift came first, not his pastoral gift. Okay. Okay. He with me as a mental counselor, not as a pastor. So that okay. really made me let me say, okay, now I get what Michael was just saying, and, and, and I and I I get what uh, Haiti was saying. You know, you're here to help us. You're not in competition. You're just exercising the God-given gift. Yes. Was that you was asking about? Amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to turn it back over to Mike and Haiti. I'm going to take them off of mute. Um, and um, I'm going to remove myself. And Amen. Amen. Good to see you. And so um, before we continue, I also want to just uh, uh, do a quick shout out because I see that my pastor's also online and he's participating. So I'm That's proud. Great. I'm proud that my pastor is a part of this discussion. Absolutely. So a quick shout out to my pastor, Pastor Juven Josias Perez. Thank you. Thank you for for your support and thank you for listening in. I, I, I know your heart and I know uh, where your heart is uh, in ministry and also with counseling. So thank you for that support. Um, so we continue, Haiti, right? Yes, sir. And we we're do. talking about what do statistics say about stress? So 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. And these could be things like depression, anxiety, hypertension, which we know is high blood pressure. And interestingly enough, individuals that are highly stressed, 82.2% of them have com you know, chronic constipation, which I'll, I'll come out and say it, that was one of the issues that I had prior to my heart attack. Um, it includes insomnia and even things like acne. And so when we're also looking at it, um, statistics say that 75% to 90% percent of all doctor's visits are for stress related ailments and complaints. So that's to tell you, if you really think about how high that number is, mm -hmm. that's a pretty significant number that is saying that a lot of the times that people go to see their primary care physician, it's because whatever ailment they're going through in some way, fashion or form is related to stress which just shows how prevalent this is. Correct. So prevalent that OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, actually has classified stress now as a hazard in the workplace. And stress, this, is, this was mind boggling to me, this statistic, stress costs American industries more than $300 billion annually in individuals that call out sick, people that take time off, um, in all kinds of having to cover insurances. So you can see how prevalent and how uh, serious this is. And just to give us another perspective, they say that the lifetime prevalence of an emotional disorder is more than 50%, often due to chronic untreated stress reactions. 
And so we're looking at pretty significant numbers. Now, these are just some of the secular statistics Correct. on, on, uh, on stress. We want to now transition and see what are the statistics in the ministerial stress? Right. And we didn't have a moment to put down, but if you, this website has a lot of statistics for clergy and for ministerial purposes. So if you want to jot this down, the website is actually www soul, like S O U L shepherding.org. So we came up and, and decided to discuss the most important ones, but there are many other statistics that you can see there. Yes. There were several pages of yes, statistics there absolutely. just to share a few of the, the ones that we felt that highlighted what our presentation is about on stress. There talks about 70% of pastors constantly fight depression. 50% feel that they are so discouraged that they would leave their ministry if they could and if they could find another job, right? But this is all that they've known. And so for them, it's difficult to move into something else. Um, there's another statistic that say 75% of pastors report being extremely stressed or highly stressed. That's 75%. I mean, you're talking about that's three, uh, three fourths, right? right. And it's interesting because sometimes I'll hear, hear people say, well, being a pastor is so easy. You know, people come and they give you money and you don't have to work. And so the statistics here said that 90 percent of pastors work between 55 to 75 hours per week, way more than the average nine to five person works. Absolutely. So if there's any pastors, ministers, I know there's some on the call. Listen, we know and we understand that your job is not easy and statistics show it's 55 to 75 hours uh, of work per week. Wow, that's astonishing. And when we look at 90% of pastors feel fatigued and worn out every week and 100%, listen to this statistic. Yes. This was 100% of 1,000 and 50 reformed and evangelical pastors had a colleague who had left the ministry because of burnout, church conflict, or moral failure. And so we wonder if that number could go down if they felt that they could go to someone to seek professional help. Absolutely. That was part of our, our side conversation. We say, wow, how many pastors that, that, that are going through these extreme episodes of high stress mm -hmm. and, and, and are going through all of these ministry conflicts, how many of them even have a way to uh, and a, a healthy and, and a safe, safe way correct. to be able to escape and to be able to share some of the things that, that they're going through? Right. And when we talk about burnout, burnout is just a level above just feeling normal stress. So 91% have experienced some form of burnout, which usually takes longer to get there. And 18% say that they are fried to a crisp, Michael. My God. That's exactly how they quoted it. <laughs> Pastors, if for nothing else, we want to encourage you. We want to take Absolutely. this opportunity to encourage you because we understand that the call, this is why Jesus himself said many are called but, but few, few are, are chosen, chosen. because I mean, I think it takes a special person. It takes a special calling. It takes a, a, a special, a level of resilience to be able to, I mean, 91% we're talking about have suffered uh, some burnout in ministry. Right. And the next one that we thought was so appropriate <laughs> and in a way sad, we know that in a lot of, for a lot of parishioners, a lot of uh, pastors, their friends attend their church. Right. And so, the pastor sometimes feels that that's a dual relationship for him. And so 70% say that they don't have someone that they can consider a close friend. So do you know how alarming that is? And, and I know that Katie and I, we ended up having a whole discussion, a whole sidebar discussion just on that statistic alone, which basically says, well, who do pastors go to? Correct. I mean, we understand and 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 we know that we we go to the Lord. We know mm -hmm. that that God is our ultimate friend mm -hmm. and we know that God is there. But at the same time, God designed us to be relational beings. Absolutely. There is no man that is an island. And that right. includes our pastors. That includes our clergy. That includes mm -hmm. those that are serving in leadership in the church. Mm -hmm. And to have a statistic to say that 70 percent or, or, or more can't even identify one person that they can have 
uh, a friendship with just to be able to vent and sometimes to just be able to release some of that stress. Correct. And so these pastors, these that have stress and high burnout, 80% of them will not be in ministry in 10 years, which is so sad if this is your calling and your giftedness and something that you know you want to give back to. It's amazing that only a fraction of those individuals will be able to make this calling a life a lifelong ministry, right? Uh, and being in the, I always say being in the helps profession is tough because you're taking upon the burden of, of, of others, right? And so it is a tough ministry to be in. On average, seminary trained pastors last only five years in their church ministry because of these kinds of issues. And then that kind of reminds me, that's that that's almost a similar statistic that I remember hearing for businesses. I think businesses yes. kind of uh, are, are they make it or break it, make it or break it within years. that five year, mm -hmm. which that says a lot about pastors and ministry and what the level of stress that accompanies living or, or, or being in that helps ministry. Right. And so that takes me back to the verse that I shared in the beginning um, as we started. Right. Matthew mm -hmm. 11, 28, where it says, come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And we understand that sometimes um, I, I remember uh, a friend of mine one time said this quote, and he says, sometimes we're so involved with church business that we forget about kingdom business. Correct. And, and and with that said, is that sometimes even pastors being human, they get sometimes so entailed with the day to day aspects of church ministry mm -hmm. that sometimes that can even be a detriment to their personal relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And even the Lord kind of has to remind pastors and says, listen, I know you're working for me, but hey, don't forget about me in the process. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so I think that's that that's important um, about stress. Interesting. So as I was mentioning the helps profession, so when we look at helps professions, things like people in the medical field, uh, in counseling and teaching and, past and pastoral ministries, people like firemen and policemen, we also suffer from something called comp compassion fatigue or vicarious trauma. And that's actually, it's also called secondary trauma. And that's from helping individuals that have traumatic events in their lives and then if you're really not resting, if you're not doing self-care, if you're not taking care of yourself, you could actually start feeling an emotional strain from this, from being exposed to working with these types of individuals. And so when, when you're looking at that, if, if, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling emotionally drained um, and you're unable to meet those constant demands, it, it, it is, it's just completely draining. And that's where sometimes we, we see um, ministries, and, and and this is applicable just in, in all across the board. I mean, we're focusing right now on ministries, but, you know, this happens in the workplace. This happens in families. This happens in marriages. This happens in all different areas of our life. Mm -hmm. And so this is why it's important to be able to educate and bring this to, to the body of Christ. And so as we move on, how does your body react when you're in fight or flight. So now we're talking about the physical aspects. What are right. the physical detriments of it? And when we look at it, we, we find that the body, it's amazing how God created our body because um, one of the things that Haiti talked about before was the alarms. And this is something that I've commonly shared when I've dealt with some kids or teenagers and I'm expl explaining to them sometimes what stress does or what anxiety does and what it looks like in the body. And I tell them, listen, God put some alarms in your body. Absolutely. And, and what happens is that sometimes we just learn to silence those alarms Absolutely. or sometimes we just learn I to ignore mm -hmm. those alarms. And mm -hmm. I, I know one of the things that I have been sometimes scolded by, by friends and family is that my, my car has a particular type of alarm and it's when I don't wear my seatbelt, yes, my car my starts to, to sound and sound. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and I'm just being transparent yes. here and I'm, I'm confessing, right. But I I've been ignoring it for so long that a lot of times I don't hear it. You don't hear it. And the alarm is sounding. And sometimes I may have a passenger on my side and says, don't you hear that alarm? Aren't you aren't you annoyed by that alarm? And I'll turn around and I'll giggle and I'll say, you know what? It's been so long and I've mm -hmm. kind of formulated a bad habit mm -hmm. that sometimes I forget to put on my seatbelt. And really, I don't hear it because it's kind of tuned out mm -hmm. when the same fashion, when we look at our bodies 
God created our bodies with certain alarms, but we learn to ignore some of these alarms. And so rather it's tense, tension, our face blushing, rather it's uh, shaking or trembling, rather it's sweating, mm -hmm. um, our heart racing, breathing, our stomach issues. Yes. Sometimes there's stomach issues. Um, our brain is racing at, at night. Sometimes it's like an overload mm -hmm. and we can't shut off the movie and Correct. we're trying to go to sleep and it goes over and over and over again. And those are different alarms that our body is telling you, wait, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And Michael, I don't know if you remember, but the day that I had my situation, uh, I remember calling my son when I sat in my car and something was up with me. I, I didn't think that I was having um, an attack, but I, I remember uh, trying to look at myself in the mirror and my face was totally changed. In other words, this that you're seeing here, the face flushing, um, I appeared to be sweating like if someone had just thrown a bucket of water over me, um, the feeling was atrocious. So when we say to you that these things happen, you know, they happen. We have to be in tune, like I said, to things. Int I found something out very interesting between men and women, and I'll just kind of throw that in there. I've made it like a life mission, but uh, for men, heart attacks come and usually they hit a man and that's it. He's in the hospital. Uh, for a woman, it's totally different. A woman usually gets a precursor of different things that happen to her body. Usually the doctor, the cardiologist explain they happen about two weeks before you're about to have this attack. And so I could go down this list and tell you that I was experiencing a lot of these things that are on this page. And like Michael says, you know, we get so busy or we're used to it that you just dismiss it and you let it go. And I think we have as humans, we have to do a better job of understanding our bodies. And I think God created us perfect. Right. He gave us tear ducts to cry. And I think that he gives us a brain to say, hey, I'm giving you a sign that something's not right with you. And I need for you to be in tune with that. And so when we're looking at um, some of the other effects of the body, right? So we understand in, in these alarms or we understand in these processes that God has created with, right? Um, there's a specific uh, chemical that is called cortisol. Correct. And when we talk about cortisol, it's the body releasing a stress hormone profusely when you're under intense pressure. Now, I want you guys, if you guys are taking notes, I want you guys to write this down because this is something that, you know, I didn't know that I learned later. And it's something called an NK. It's a natural killer cell. And these NK cells are cells that virtually that kill when we have viruses in our body and it kills if we're starting to have like a tumor, um, a cancerous tumor, these NK cells that God gave us are supposed to be targeting these things in our body. Well, guess what? If we are highly stressed and our cortisol level goes up, the cortisol actually kills off the NK cells, which is the only thing that we have to help our bodies against viruses and things as detrimental as cancer. And, and, and so when we're understanding just how cortisol works, cortisol in and of itself is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. God created it because if we're in a moment of danger, if we're in a moment that merits a certain level of stress, then the body needs to be able to respond with it appropriately, right? And so when we look at this specific stress hormone, what does it do? It, height, it heightens our memory and attention. It increases our blood pressure. Um, it suppresses the immune system because it's giving you, um, it increases your blood sugar. What it's trying to do is it's trying to put you in a position where you're ready to deal with whatever that specific danger you're facing is. Right. But if it's too much, then it could be detrimental to you. Exactly. And so too much of a good thing is bad. Correct. Right. And so that's in, in layman's terms, what, how cortisol uh, affects our body. So we wanted to touch a little bit about emotional eating because we know that stress does that, right? We get used to uh, going and trying to find our comfort food. For some people, it's sweets. For some other people, it's chips or mashed potatoes or collard greens or something that, you know, makes you feel good, right? And so we thought that this was so interesting, right, that the word stress is spelled dessert backwards. So whoever came up with that, I don't know. I can't give them uh, any kudos, but we thought it was interesting. So cortisol's primary function is to replace all the energy spent when you're out in there in that fighting and our fleeing mode that we talked about earlier. So 
it makes you hungry. And so what do we do when we are stressed and we are emotional? What do you do, Michael? What do you go for? We, t- we tend to go for the for the cookies and the chips and the, uh, absolutely. those Oreo cookies. And <laughs> absolutely. And so then what happens is that this makes us feel temporarily better but then it actually starts storing fat into our bodies, which is really detrimental. You're going to meet in a second, you're going to meet stress belly Bob in our next slide. Um, and now actually there is a term for that. There is a term for a person that has a big belly. It's you, it's usually uh, because of, of stress, right? And so when we look at it, um, as Haiti was saying, right? So cortisol in and of itself, that stress hormone, it call it stores fat on the body in very two specific places, right? And it deposits it on our blood vessel walls, mm-hmm. right? And that's it's, how people get, you know, clogged arteries. Exactly, and and that's what uh, causes those 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 heart issues and those strokes, right? And then it stores around our midsections in our fight or flight fuel allocation stations, right? right. So if if you ever have a tape measure, and if you can measure yourself around your belly. If you're a man and your waist is over 40 inches, that is probably a very high indication that your cortisol level is higher than it should be. And for women, it's it's anything over 35 inches. And so chemicals also, uh, like cortisol, also shrink and change the physical structure of our brain. Mm-hmm. So again, we're talking about God designed this chemical because it's not meant It's just meant for a specific uh, set of time, a short period of time to deal with whatever that danger or whatever Mm -hmm. that situation is. But if we don't learn to bring those stress levels down, then it actually affects our brain. It it, it influences, uh, it had significant consequences in how we interact with others, what decisions we make, rather we accomplish long-term goals and our ability to even deal with daily challenges. Right, and I wanted to mention something uh, regarding wakefulness and and people that have insomnia. When you have high levels of cortisol, that can really affect your sleeping patterns. And so I wanna say something that most people don't know. So what you should be aiming for is you should be aiming for no least than six hours of sleep a night and no more than nine hours. So incredibly, a lot of people don't know this, but Undersleeping is just as detrimental as oversleeping because they both make you develop more visceral fat and that's not good, right? So we need to remember that, Michael, no less than six hours and no more than nine. So this next slide is pretty interesting, right? And um, I think Hedy and I, we, we've had experiences and we were Absolutely. kind of supporting each other through certain circumstances we've gone through. but. It, it poses a question and it says, what if the tiger or the bear comes home every day? And and when you think about the thing about who could be your tiger or who could be your bear, is it, you know, a condescending uh, boss at work who consistently demeans you and, and disrespects you? Is it an abusive spouse mm-hmm. that maybe you have to deal with and you come home to every day um, and there could be verbally abusive, physically abusive or abusive in just many different ways? Right. Is it that you're struggling financially and you can't take care of your children in the way that you would like? And that becomes that bear that you don't you don't see that you can get past. Right. Uh, so individuals, this is in- an interesting statistic, individuals that have this kind of constant stress. This is that stress that is attacking. It doesn't go away and it could encompass all these things, physical, financial, digestive, chemical, relational, right? They have a 50% higher mortality rate than a person that doesn't struggle with this. So we need for you to think about that and, and to take that very seriously, right? And so we see that as we talk about here, um, this type of, of stress becomes ci- cyclical. So that just means that it spirals, it goes around in circles. And you'll see when it starts to affect your Im- immune system, that's when you start to develop sicknesses. Um, it could uh, affect your blood sugar levels and give you hyperglycemia. It could give you hypertension, which would lead to um, heart failure. And, and like Michael was saying, you have rumination at night where you're just ruminating and ruminating. You can't actually, you know, stop your brain from thinking about these horrible things. And then also, which, you know, we would like to cover another day, maybe addictions and suicide 
all of this kind of stress can also uh, lead to a, lead to addictions in people because they start self medicating in order to feel better. And and in, in this specific site, I remember that um, Haiti and I we were talking about it, and of course the example that's being used is a tiger and a bear. Mm -hmm. But we were thinking about like, well, how does this relate to scripture, right? Mm -hmm. And it just talks about how you know scripture tells us. Do not ignore the wiles of the enemy, mm -hmm. for he's like a roaring, roaring lion, lion waiting to see, waiting to see, see who will devour. Can, can, can devour. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at that, we can say that sometimes, you know, the, the, the scripture also tells us that my people perish because they lack knowledge mm -hmm. or they lack wisdom. And I think that the Lord allows us to bring these things because maybe that lion that has been that you have been ignoring in your life maybe that circumstance that situation that stressing factor that you think is just going to go away and you're dealing with maybe that's the issue that God wants you to deal with today maybe God wants to make you free of that maybe God wants to set you free and deliver you rather it's coming from a financial aspect or a relational aspect or it's coming because um, uh, uh, your job or it's coming because of your children or a spouse or whatever it is. This is something that God is allowing us and reminding us this day that we are not to ignore the stress. We're, God didn't design us to ignore. It. It's there. Those alarms are sounding. And God is saying, I need you to be healthy so that you can do what I called you to do and fulfill God's purpose in the kingdom. Absolutely. Now, Sister Leticia, do you have any more uh, questions? No, I didn't have any questions. There were just a few comments that, um, that came across, but uh, there was no questions. I don't think. Okay. I think with your permission, since I see that we're running out of time, we had a few slides, three slides on how um, cortisol affects the womb and children. And I think that we're going to leave that for another time so that we can continue on the fourth screen. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, because I think that this is important and this is the type of stress that is the hardest to recognize. So a lot of people have routine stress in their life and because it's so constant, it's almost like that woman that's in a battered relationship, but since, She has a honeymoon period and then she has abuse and then she it, it spirals. She doesn't realize that she's in an abusive relationship. And this is what happens with this. So routine stress could be things like a complicated relationship. It could be dealing with a boss. And because it's it's all the time, you don't realize that it's there because it's routinary. It could be a person that's having an issue with a church member, uh, a pastor that's having a, a, a serious situation with them. It could be work that you have piled up at work that you, you know, continuously are, are starting to get to, to when you can't finish. And it's kind of like that nagging feeling yeah. that you can't get over. Now, this is one of the, this specific slide, I think it's specifically important mm -hmm. because um, when we talk about routine stress, like Haiti said, it's very difficult to notice at first. And this is where I believe counseling mm -hmm. is such an essential aspect to of be able it. to process this with the person because a lot of times mm -hmm. unless you're in counseling sometimes we all have our blind spots absolutely and we have areas in our life that we don't see and sometimes because it becomes such a routine in my life that i don't realize wow i've been living with that level of stress for a really long time correct and that reminds me uh, a client that i had many years ago and 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 she would always come and tell me about difficulties that she was having with her husband but she would always enable the behavior and she would say but she would say so he hit me but it was that he had a bad day at work and I and I would say to her repeat that sentence to me and don't use the word but and it was only then that she had an epiphany to say he hit me that's what was important not what what came after the you know he had a bad day or he was in a bad mood right and so that is true that sometimes as as counselors we have to bring some things into the forefront for our for our counselees which they don't see themselves yeah and and this is where as you're you're seeking counseling and as you're talking with someone they may be able to bring something to that forefront that you never saw before and say wow i didn't realize that that was a detriment to my life and so when we look at long term stress and health it can occur if the stress response goes on for too long and becomes chronic such as when the source of stress is constant or if the response continues after the danger has subsided. Right. So basically what we're saying is that your nervous system, because this is chronic all the time, 
your nervous system doesn't have adequate chance to activate a relaxation response. And so it is under undue stress all the time, right? So we have certain chronic stressors, so they could be emotional stressors. You can have environmental stressors, relational stressors, or work. And actually, um, the three top causes of stress right now at this moment are money, work, and family responsibilities. And, and so when you're looking at it, different people feel stress in different ways. And so this is where we were talking about the alarms. We go back to those mm -hmm. alarms again, right? Um, well, the, the alarms that Haiti might feel are completely different than the alarms that Mike is going to feel. Correct. God created us differently, but they're alarms nonetheless. And for example, people experiencing mainly digestive sy symptoms, while others may have headaches, sleepiness, sadness, anger, and irritability. irritability. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about people under chronic stress, are prone to be more frequent and more severe to viral infections, such as the flu and the common cold. Absolutely. And 51% and of all adults that feel this kind of symptomology, they also experience fatigue that comes along with us. And it just also makes me wonder if how much more susceptible those people that are in a high level of stress might be to even the, the uh, COVID Mm -hmm. to COVID-19 because it is a virus. And we understand that there is a lot of scientific um, evidence like uh, we we're briefly going to discuss That's in the next slide. Right. And this, we're just going to go briefly over it so that we can uh, continue. But there is something in your body is called biofilm. So if think about the easiest one to remember is dental plaque, right? If you're, if you don't have a highly stressful life, your, your dent, your dental plaque will remain that. But if you have a lot of stress in your life, this biofilm will increase and will cause cavities, right? And all of these other things, the examples that we were giving, um, the biofilm in your ear can convert into an ear infection. You can have streptococcus, staphylococcus. You might have a scratch on your arm, and then all of a sudden it becomes a complex wound. And that's all because you're living a life of stress and your body cannot repair itself because you're still under this alarm phase. And so what about the brain? Stress can cause worry, emotional tension, distraction, and our loss of concentration. These things can lead to memory loss. They can contribute to people's performance in either work um, or their daily life. Right, so uh, just a brief thing about the brain. I think that you guys have heard, right? Our brain is made out of white and gray matter. So the gray matter basically are neurons and what we call support cells. Those help us in decision making and in problem solving, right? So those are good. Then we have white matter. These are axons that connect with other regions of the brain to communicate information back and forth, right? What happens is that when you have a high level of stress, your stress is going to affect the balance between the gray and the white matter. And then it's going to affect your hippocampus. And then it's going to spill out into mental health. We can skip this one, Michael. We can, at another time, we can come back on that study. Um, and we have, um, there's there's so many different studies. There's so much information actually mm -hmm. that uh, we understood that it, we were gonna get real close uh, to the ending time, but we just for the for the sake of just gener generalizing, there's different correlational studies that affect uh, of stress on suicide, the effect of stress in women's health, the effect Correct. in stress in men's health, mm -hmm. um, in sex drive, in relationships. It's just uh, so many tons of different studies that, uh, of how stress affects us. But I think um, one of the things that we did like, and, and I think um, we want to be able to emphasize, is the vicious circle of negative automatic thinking. And it says when stress becomes a disorder, it causes a shift in thinking. And the first thing that I thought of from the word of God was Romans 12, 2, that it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so that's even in our counseling, these are the types of things that we try to stress um, to the individuals, right? And in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Right, Michael? Absolutely. And so when we're talking about it, right, we, what it actually is telling us, and now we're not just talking about scripture, we're talking about how science backs mm -hmm. up 
what scripture, what scripture says, says right Absolutely. and and I, I like psalms i found psalms 94 um 19 where it says when my anxious thoughts multiply within me your consolations delight my soul and what is that saying i think that is telling us that as believers and just as individuals we are constantly bombarded with stress and these stress will in turn turn into negative thoughts correct and a lot of times these negative thoughts if they're there consistently and constantly they become into those distorted thoughts which then affects mm -hmm. all the different areas of our lives right and what are we telling ourselves and actually i haven't even shared this with mike but i i found something today and it was from an unknown author but i found a quote and it says your body hears everything that your mind says and i thought how interesting right uh, if we could correlate that to luke 6 45 where it says out of the abundance of our heart our mouth speaks right so we see that there is always correlation in, in the things that are scientific and the things that are from the word of god and so as we're as we're going through this and, and we're talking about stress and we see how stress can affect how we think and how we think affects how we feel and how we feel affects how we behave. And so we see that there is a connection with it. And so sometimes when we see someone's ultimate behaviors, we only focus on the behavior, but we don't realize that that behavior started with a stressor. And that mm -hmm. stressor affected that negative thought. Mm -hmm. And that negative thought turns into a feeling and that feeling in turn turns into a right. behavior. And I think Jesus shows us a, an example of this when he tells the paralytic man, now pick up your mat and walk as if I'm gonna make you change your behavior and your thinking and all of a sudden you're gonna do what I'm asking you to do. And that's part of self-talk for yourself. Absolutely, and it's being able to challenge those negative thoughts and being able to challenge those negative stressors. And so stress in the workplace, right? We've talked about stress in ministry, stress in the, in the workplace. And we'll just go briefly on just some of the main topics, right? Let, let me give them a few statistics, So, which I thought was interesting. 83% of all U.S. workers state that they have significant stress in their lives. 60% of young adults ages 18 to 24 relate stress to the pressure to succeed. And 49% experience high stress due to comparing themselves with others and the success of others. Absolutely. So when we're looking at stress in the workplace, we're talking about feeling like there's not enough time, over, over multitasking, fearing change, feeling insufficient. Am I talking to somebody out there? Um, relationship trouble, mm -hmm. physical health issues. I remember Proverbs 24.10 that says, if you are slack in the day of distress, your strength is limited. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically reminding us that our, our strength, the, the more stressed we are, the more weary we become and the more tiresome it becomes. Correct. And, and actually work related stress leads uh, to about 120,000 deaths a year. And so I, I think this is the, the, the actual time where um, Haiti, you can kind of, uh, bring us home with a little bit of the right, testimony, testimony that I know you've been giving us bits and pieces, but I think this is a good way to be able to, to end this presentation. So, so I think that if, if I have any nurses or doctors um, listening, you'll understand the severity of this. And, and I have to say to you that the Lord um, has been real in my life for many years. I was the first believer in my family and, and the Lord really has come through, but this day in particular, um, October 23rd of 2017, I have to tell you that God became so real in my life and in the life of my son. And I will say to you that uh, Michael and I had been going through some very stressful events at work. Um, I was actually trying to do all the right things. I, I had gone to the gym to, you know, try to do a little bit of exercise. And while I was there, I, I felt something very strange. And, um, the, the person that was helping me, the trainer got mad and said, oh, you're just being lazy. And the Lord just gave me an urgency and, and told me, leave, you need to leave. And so I remember vividly that I went to my car and I got in my car. And I, the first thing I did is that I, I called my son and, uh, and I said, Papi, I have a question. You know, where are you? And my son at that point was an undergrad student. He's now a neuropsychologist. Um, and he said, oh, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way home and I'm going to be home in a few minutes. Now, the Lord is amazing because 
Later, the uh, cardiologist told me that if I had done what initially I was going to do, that I would, I would have died immediately. So my thought was I was going to, going to go home. I was going to take a shower and go to sleep. And they assured me that I would have never woken up. And the Lord was so amazing. Uh, this was a gym that I would routine, routinely go to and I would routinely take specific streets to get from the gym back to my home. And not once and not twice, but three times I got to a street that was blocked for me to go home. And so I remember being on the phone with my son and, and saying, Danny, can you do me a favor? Can you just stay on the phone with me? And, and he knew about the stressors that we were going through. And he said, mom, you're having a panic attack. And of course I knew I wasn't having a panic, panic attack. And I said, no, honey, I feel off. Just stay on the phone with me. And all of a sudden, when I got to the last street where I could have turned left to go to my home, there was an actual blockage again on that road. And there were about 20 cars waiting to make the left. And I just knew that I couldn't wait. The Lord just said, make a right. And so I, I listened to the Lord's voice and I found myself very back again, very close to where Michael and I used to work. And on the corner of that street, we had a fire um, department. And so I decided, I, I said to my son and my son kept saying, mom, I'm going to be there, you know, meet me in, in, the, in the house. And so I ended up um, stopping at the fire department and you know that something is wrong when you hear the captain, they're doing an electrocardiogram on you. You hear the captain saying, no, no, this can't be right. So do it again. And so they had repeated my electrocardiogram a few times. I had seven or eight men working on me doing different things. And, and finally the captain said, ma'am, you are, you are dying. You are gravely ill and we need to rush you to the hospital. So for doctors that are out there and, you know, this was very mind blowing for me. So, you know, the way that they find out if you've really had something cardiomyopathy in your heart is that they do two tests, right? So they do um, an echocardiogram and then they do something called a troponin test. So if you've had any kind of attack and your troponin levels are anything over 0.04, you have had an attack and my numbers came back. It's a, it's a, a three part test. And my number came back at a 7.9. My ejection fraction came back at a 17, uh, which meant that I had only 17% of my heart working. And so I remember that the nurse came to me and said, ma'am, this is, you know, we have to rush it to ICU. This is, you know, the Lord had given me a piece about what was going on. And I remember her telling me, um, only 17% of your heart is working. And I said, well, I can work with 17%. I don't know that I can work with zero, but I can work with 17%, right? And so, of course, they think that I'm having this massive heart attack. Um, they start putting me on medication. And the next morning, I was supposed to have my catheterization in the morning, uh, which is that they go into your um, part of your thigh and, and they check to see, right? Because if these numbers are so severe, then they would think that you have clogged arteries and that you have, you know, a blood clot or something of that, and you're going to need surgery. And ho and behold, the next day, um, I come to find out that I had something called stress-induced cardiomyopathy. And I do believe that the Lord was there and that the, the Lord could have healed me. But the more I researched this, the more I realized that this was real, right? And so this thing called tukosubo, they call it that because what ends up happening when you have uh, broken heart syndrome, which I was telling Mike now, I've seen this now in a few TV shows. They're actually starting to talk about this disorder. Um, they call it that because the word uh, tokutsubo uh, was invented in Japan in 1990, and that's what they call their octopus trap. And the reason that they called it this is because when you're experiencing this kind of heart failure, your left ventricle blows up like a balloon, and it looks exactly like this octopus trap that they use in Japan. So 90% of women um, are the ones that have this stress-induced cardiomyopathy, this broken heart syndrome, and most of us are postmenopausal. So I actually, it occurred to me uh, when I was 59, I was one month short of turning 60. Um, it attacks most women ages 58 to 75, and it's dormant. So what this means is that you know, I take medication every day. I take my med medication to make sure that my heart rate doesn't speed up too much. Um, but it was all stress induced. And so this is why I was saying that for me, 
this is so near and close to home. And actually, Michael was one of the first individuals that once they took me out of ICU, I ended up spending um, five days in ICU. And then I spent five days in telemetry, which he came and actually, I remember you brought food for my son and I, uh, the first good food that we had had. Um, and, and it becomes, it became a totally surreal for me when they came to my room to fit me for something called a cardiac life vest and a cardiac life vest. Um, and I know we're, we're, we're done. So I'll finish quickly. Our, a cardiac life vest is an external defibrillator that you were, that you wear because they thought that I could die from something called sudden um, heart syndrome and that kills you instantly. So this cardiac life vest is supposed to turn itself on. If you ever die, it's supposed to hit you again. Um, and so it became a very surreal thing for me to think that, you know, that basically I could have died over something that was totally stress related. They found nothing wrong with me physically. I didn't have hypertension. I didn't have um, any issues with diabetes. I didn't have any problems in my heart. I had no clogged arteries. So, you know, so, so when in looking at that, and, and thank you, thank you, Haiti, for 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 sharing in your transparency. But that just highlights the seriousness of what stress can do. Mm -hmm. It can do to the body. And um, as I was thinking about Haiti's uh, testimony, and and we were talking about this Tokosubu syndrome and so forth, it took me to Psalms one forty seven three, mm -hmm. and I, and and I think that this is if we're going to end this. I want to be able to end it on the word of God that basically says Absolutely. he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their womb. What is that telling me? That tells me that the God that we serve, no matter how stress may be affecting our life, our lives may be affected physically with stress. It might be affected emotionally with mm -hmm. stress. It might be affecting us mentally. It might be affecting us in any which way or form in all the little holistic processes that we were able to share little bits and pieces of tonight. I want to let you know, whoever's listening out there or whoever may share this video later on for someone that might be going through a hard time with stress, I want to let you know that we do serve a God that heals the brokenhearted. Absolutely. And rather it's that's your literal heart or rather that's your emotional heart or rather that's your mental heart or rather it's your spiritual heart. I wanna let you know that there is hope in that. We thank you for your attention. We thank, thank you, you so for this much. opportunity. Absolutely. And we're gonna turn it over to Letitia. May God bless you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Mike, um, Mr. Haiti. Uh, what an awesome uh, presentation. I, I know you didn't get an opportunity to finish. I'm kind of glad you didn't finish. That just gives me more of an excuse to bring you back um, because absolutely. I, have, I, have absolutely. Slides, I have the slides and, 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 I, and I know some of the other topics that you were going to hit on. Uh, one of the questions that came across the um, the uh, uh, the chats here is they were asking about slides. I'm not sure if they're, uh, I'm sorry, handouts. I'm not sure if they were referring to um, maybe um, your um, your uh, your presentation. Um, would you be willing to um, to share those slides, or or do you have an alternate slide deck? Or are you okay with that? Hang on one second. Let me just unmute you. I was getting some yeah. feedback. Yeah, I'm definitely okay with that. I don't I don't have an issue. I think that it would be good for us to be able to come back and maybe do a part two. Um, yes, agreed. <laughs> yeah, but I, I have no issues with you sharing. This is um, for the edification yeah, of the body of Christ. Absolutely. And I have absolutely. one thing. You know, I wouldn't change my experience for anything. My cardiologist was Arminian. He didn't know about Jesus and Christ. And every morning when he would come in and he would say, you know, Miss Fuentes, you're a really lucky lady. I would say, oh, no, 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 I'm not. Haiti is blessed. And Amen. So to share, I got to share, uh, you know, the word with him. And I really believe that that, you know, it was something that I actually just put in there that the Lord's going to touch him at some point. Amen. Well, thank you uh, once again um, so much for, for your diligence. You know, it, it takes so much longer to prepare um, the presentation than it does to actually execute. So um, I, I, I know that you labored hard just to pull all this together. So um, I, you guys already know I appreciate you. I love you much in the Lord. So. Um, all right. So um, we will be back um, next Monday, May 17th at uh, 7.30 p.m. And we will have a panel 
Um, Michael is going to be a part of that um, of that panel as well, um, as well as some of our other uh, Spanish speaking brothers and sisters in Christ. And um, we're going to be talking about the role of the church as it relates to mental health and wellness, um, along with some other topics. But that's pretty much going to be um, our focus. Exactly what role does the church play um, in mental health and wellness? You know, there's uh, a number of arguments on the table um, in terms of whether uh, it's even biblical. So uh, tune back in next Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, for that lively discussion. Amen is going to be, um, I say in Spanglish. <laughs> so both English and Spanish. So if you don't speak Spanish, please come. I, I promise you, 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 you'll understand. If you don't speak English and you speak Spanish, please come. You, you will understand. Uh, so, um, Dr. Ward, did you have any um, any comments? If so, if you can raise your hand. Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, um, for your contributions in the chat box. Thank you, Evangelist Toby, for your contributions to the discussion. Uh, God bless you, Sister Gloria, Dr. Glasby, Pastor Glasby. Thank you so much, Pastor Bobby. Thank you. I will send those, um, uh, Pastor Bobby, I will send um, tonight. I will just go ahead and send the presentation directly to uh, your inbox, and then I can also make those slides available um, on the on the on this website on the on the uh, Facebook page. I'm sorry as well, but I'll send it directly uh, directly to you. Thank you so much, um, um, Sister Gwen. God bless you. Thank you all. And so, without further delay, I am going to bring um, Pastor uh, Nico uh, back to the forefront. He is. Um, if he has any closing comments, we're open to that but he's gonna close us out in prayer. And uh, we hope to see you back as well as uh, those that you invite on next Monday for a continuation as we um, observe Mental Health and Wellness Month. All right, so I'll bring um, Pastor Nico on the screen here. All right, okay. All right, hey. okay. I just wanna say this is therapeutic for me, so um, I just really, <laughs> So I, I, I this I'm just I, I just had a woosaw moment listening to all of this. It's kind of like I just want to say I'm getting clarity of what I'm dealing with. I'm just like I'm having a better understanding, even though I still go to my behavioral health. It's just like this is another source, and it's just bringing it all to fruition for me that I can say okay. So there are some other coping mechanisms that I can put into place. Now I have an understanding of why I gained weight or why I have a lack of interest in things. And uh, so I just want to thank you both. Uh, and Pastor, you know, uh, Tina, I mean, just thank you. You know, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let's just let's go ahead and close in prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the platform and the, the, the boldness and the people coming forth, Father, to speak, to let us know that it is okay. It is okay to be broken because your word says that you're drawn to the brokenhearted, but you're healing the broken heart. Father, I thank you right now for Michael and Haiti, Heavenly Father. I thank you that, that for their strength. I thank you for their character. I thank you for their patience. But Lord, I thank you for the gift that you have instilled inside of them that they can reach out to all of mankind to reach out to your creation, Lord, and to come forth so that we there can be some type of bridge built, Heavenly Father, between the medical world and, 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 and the spiritual world, Heavenly Father, that we can have a true understanding, that we can work hand in hand, that we're not in competition with one another, but we're here together to lift up one another so that we can actually say, I am my brother's keeper. Lord, I just thank you for every person that was listening, those that are watching. I thank you for all the comments that have come forth. Father, I just thank you for that. This, this session will go viral, Heavenly Father, that it will not just stop here this evening, that it will reach the four corners of your earth, and this will cause others to stand up. This will call other ministries to stand up. This will call other mental uh, counselors and, and, and specialists to stand up and say yes. We are here to help you. We're not here to embarrass you. We're not here to shame you. We're here to make you more stable. But Lord, we understand that it's your word that is the foundation of our life, but that you have given gifts within your kingdom 
-hmm. that your word should still stand and that that our vessels heavenly father that this temple heavenly father can stand strong against the vices of the enemy and father i thank you for every spiritual leader out there that's coming to have a true understanding that we cannot fix everything but we can direct the people to the place where they need to get those things fixed lord because you are a loving god and you are an evolving god God, you put these things before us so that we can utilize them properly. Lord, as we close out this session, Father, I just thank you for the host. I thank you for bridging the gap, um, uh, 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 nation's ministry, Heavenly Father, that, that this gap is being bridged all over the world. Father, I thank you for Pastor Hill. Father, I thank you for her overseer, her oversight, her pastor, Pastor uh, Gatsby and, and Lady Gatsby. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone that's divinely connected. But Lord, if we have not done anything, Father, it, there's anything to edify you this evening, Father, I thank, ask you for your forgiveness. But Lord, I know that all this was edifying for your kingdom and for the ears. For it says, let those that have ears and those who want to listen, let them hear. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Nico. Um, Brother Michael, Sister Haiti, all of you that's connected tonight, we bless God for each one of you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back um, on Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless each one of you. Until the next time, God bless. We love you much in the Lord. Take care, everybody. <laughs>